Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Just look at it. Just marvel at American trucks. Um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Which one looks better in the comment section? You have a white Ram Rebel and you have a white Ford Trimmer. I'm going to be biased, so I'm not going to even say. But who sits higher? You see the mirrors on the Ram? They sit higher, but you can't gauge that. It looks like the Ford's roof is higher. I mean, look at the skid plate on that Ford. Whew. Wow. Let's look at the back. Okay. The Ford is sitting higher, but it has like a lot of rake. I don't know. Check out how wide the tires are. This is going to be like a quick video. I just wanted to show them side by side, interior and exterior. Special shout out to Century Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Century Ford. They have both of these trucks. You gotta check out their inventory. Hold on. Whose cab is bigger? Oh, I think the Rams is bigger. I think the Rams is bigger. I love the skid plate on the Ford. Now, it doesn't start here. This is all plastic up here. But down below, look at how big that beast is. And there's one right behind it too. Most likely protecting that transfer case. Independent front suspension. And really meaty tires. What kind of tires are these? These are going to be General Grabber tires, and they're going to be a 275-70-18. And let's check out the capacity. 2,756 pounds at 44 PSI. Now, Ram does it a little bit different. What they do is they give you an off-road bumper. Hear all that? That's all metal and just finishing this black material and you see how the bumper kind of goes up to just give you better clearance and approach so it definitely sits a little bit higher on the ends of the bumper which is really useful going off road however it's missing a front skid plate it does have a skid plate for that transfer case however but tow hooks are black and then pretty much everything else on this truck is black. I do like the design a little bit better on the Fords. I love that burnt orange. It's on the tow hooks down below too. I wonder if this would get scratched up though. It looks good though. It looks really good. But they're both pretty much blacked out on the emblems too. There's a little bit of chrome around that Ford emblem. But everything on the front of the Ram is just completely darkened. You do have parking sensors on both sides. Even on the side of the bumpers. They have them. Same thing goes for the Ford. Now, as far as the tires go in the Ram, they are going to be a Goodyear Wrangler. And these are actually an LT 275 7018. So, 3,640 pounds of capacity, 80 psi. These are way more robust tires compared to these general grabber tires. Now, since they're the same size, they're going to have the same height. Ram does increase the ride height by one inch on the ram however because ford uses a 33 inch tire that's the only height you're going to get on this truck it's just you have a taller tire so realistically the ram has a higher height over the standard ram 1500s and this is going to have a little bit higher height based off of the tires now as far as the hoods go i think it's safe to say that ram wins this one this hood is really aggressive and then check out the hood on the Ford F-150 a little bit more dressed down this is more of like a I don't know how to explain it this is more of like the grown-up truck compared to the Raptor and this is like a mix in between now as far as the headlights go this does have a projector style now keep in mind these are not standard However, on the Ram Rebel, they are standard with LED and full LED headlights. However, the Ford, you have to go up two trim packages 
to get this one. So this package is going to probably be about 13 grand. And these are auto leveling. And that is not available on the RAM. You do have LED fog lights on both sides. And overall, I think that we have a clear winner. And I don't know which one it is because I wasn't keeping track of score there. So it just depends on which one you like better. I like the more aggressive RAM. This is more like business casual, more or less. Before we move on, I want to make something really clear. This is a off-road tuned suspension. It's just not higher than a regular Ford F-150 in terms of the suspension. But apart from that, check out the powertrain on this beast. This is a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo. And let's just face it, this has everyone beat right now. Performance is 400 horsepower, 500 pound feet of torque, made it to a 10 speed transmission. That's scary. However, on this side of things, we have a 5.7 V8. It does have a mild hybrid system, so this is gonna be a generator. This is gonna be good for 395 horsepower, 410 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed transmission. So I can't wait to see the performance between both trucks. On the Ford, I do like the painted bumpers and things like that. Again, some of these things might be an option because this is a higher trim level. So just keep that in mind. And the accents just look really good. The wheels have like a gunmetal look to them. And you do have an off-road running board too. I would like to see them a little bit closer to the cab, but not a big deal. Off to the side, you do have a five and a half foot bed. Shows that trimmer badge or decal. And you also have leaf springs out back too. You can see that it says trimmer on the back of that shock absorber to let you know that it is a off-road tuned suspension. As I talk into the exhaust, you can hear it echoing. Out back, you can see that Ford did mimic the uh, exhaust for the Raptor. Now, this is something Ram's been doing for a long time, having a dual exhaust out back. I think it looks really good. And this one does have a 373 rear axle. I know you guys probably noticed some of that rust on the bottom. That's something that Ford has been having an issue with with these newer trucks, but they say that it doesn't affect the performance of them. Now, under this side, you do have a 392 and you can see there's no rust under there too by the way and they are blacked out for the tailpipes same thing goes for the ford and i like the black appearance of this bumper too and you see that rebel badge and a few other badges too and then here's your trimmer badge as well they do have some hooks down below on this truck there aren't any on this one they both have class four receiving hitches, all that good stuff. Let's check out the tailgates. They are assisted. This one does have a spray and bed liner and a LED light for your conventional hitch. This one's a little bit more simpler. And they do give you a step on the side. And this tailgate is a lot more functional versus the Ram too. And one last thing to mention too, you do have a 120 volt power plug here and you have two plugs. Bed lights, it is available on the Ram too. And let's check this out too. Want to flex real quickly on the Ram, unfortunately. So this is where things get really hard. I really do like the interior of this truck. Love the seats, these seats are big and bold they have a great appearance to them that same color accent that you saw outside follows it on the inside and it's everywhere and ford just keeps on flexing Oop. there's a key for here but look at that isn't that cool i think that the ford is going to win the interior for the day i think i like this a little bit better everything just looks a little bit nicer check it out It really does look up scale inside of here. The buttons, the big 12 inch display. This has a pro trailer backup, which Ram has that too now. 
trailer brake, push button start. On that note, let's go ahead and start it up. Oh, I don't have the key. Hold on one second. There it is. We have a key. We won't take too much time in here. You do have a power shift column. Again, a lot of the stuff you're gonna see in here is optional. Like it comes standard with an eight inch display, although the Rams is a lot smaller too, standard. But check out your digital gauge cluster, beautiful. And let's see what kind of information they have in here. So trip and fuel, it's right here. So you can check out your fuel economy, your trip one and trip two, and eco behavior, all kinds of stuff. Let's see what else they have. Truck info. Check this out. All right, so engine hours, idle, oil life, all that good stuff. And then it just shows a few other things like seat belts, power distribution, off-road. You got some uh, gauges here and it shows the powertrain, which is the pitch and roll, tire pressure. And yeah, I think that this truck is just probably the better one because you have drive modes. You have quite a few too. So you have normal, slippery, Deep snow and sand, mud ruts, rock crawl, and then it goes all the way back. And you have sport too. You also have eco, and then let's just go back to normal. And then, as I mentioned, you have this big 12 inch display. Just check out the navigation. Really big, really clear. Now, let's put this shifter back up. It's wrapped in leather with some stitching. Let's put it in reverse love this you can actually uh zoom in too if you like I like that they do that and yeah everything's really clear and easy to see my favorite spot for the auxiliary switch is up here and this one has it this has a big panoramic sunroof storage and i, I just love this cab i think this is definitely the winner i like the way it looks i like the big screen Sorry about that, my uh, camera just got really full. But check out your center console, really deep. You have some storage and some USBs down there. And then out back, you have a 6040 bench. You have more USBs, power plug, additional power plug up top. And you have heated seats for the outboard. And it does have LED interior lights. Now let's go check out that RAM. So check out the door card of the RAM. This is really, really nice. And this is not even the nicest actually. But you do have leather, soft touch, pretty much everywhere up top. Uh, the only thing, this one does not have power folding mirrors. It does have a telescoping steering wheel. And I do like the design of this. This is a seven inch screen. I believe that Ford was like a 12 incher. But you do have power pedals down below this one does have the 12 inch display and you do have this little guy too you do have your four-wheel drive system here you have auto downhill assist you can lock that axle too I don't know this cab feels a little bit bigger than the Fords it could just be me um, I am surprised that they do still put incandescent bulbs inside the interior but like I said, I think there's a, another trim level above this one for the Rebel. Like, there's like a lot of packages, not trim level, but packages. But you do have some covered storage over here. I like this center console a lot better. It's a little bit deeper, has a lot more like usable space, and four USBs as opposed to two in the auxiliary. Center console, you have a USB inside there, and you have even more storage out back. So, all in all, this one does not have the panoramic sunroof, but that is available for this truck. I believe the Ford has a little bit better wow factor. This is nice, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Tell me. I mean, you do have those seat memories. I do like the fact that you have more information and it's easier to find in this screen. 
And Uconnect 5 is a game changer, guys. I think this is probably the best on the market. The screen is a little clearer too. And it just shows you down here what cam it is. It's in. Now, as far as your nav goes, check it out here. So you can do a full screen for it. And it looks, I like, I like this a lot better. This does have heated seats, heated steering wheel. Now let's check out the back. Alrighty, so like I said, the interior is just a little bit more classier than the Fords. But I think that the Fords is a little bit nicer. 60-40 vents. And you do have a spot down below for storage too. Cup holders in the center. And then you have four USBs, power plug, and outboard heated seats on this one as well. Really quickly, I wanted to show you the window sticker for the Rebel that you saw in the video here. So here is the configuration with the base price at 53895 And then here's some of the options down below. So starting off as a technology group for 1095 Rebel 12 package is 2995 and it continues at the top here. Most expensive option on this truck is going to be the Rebel Level B equipment group. You can get the 5.7 as an option. It does come standard with the V6, which is naturally aspirated. Destination comes in at $17.95 with a total price of $67,910. Now, as far as the Ford goes, so this one here is going to have a base price of $50,735. And then here are all the options. So this is a 402A equipment group. So this is the highest level that you can get and this one does have that 36 gallon fuel tank the ram does come with a 33 gallon option and here's a few other things down below and for this one destination is at 1695 with a total price of 73,465 alrighty so we gotta look at the numbers so this has a gross axle weight rating out front at 3,900 pounds. The rear is 4,100 pounds with a 7,100 pound GVWR. All in payload capacity with the options is 1,477. Now as far as the capacity goes for this one, you do have a gross axle weight rating out front at 3,600 pounds, 3,800 pounds for the rear, 7,000 pound GVWR, and 1,486 pounds of payload. So this edges out the Ram by a little bit. But keep in mind if the Ford and the Ram had the same GVWR, the Ford would have 100 pounds more payload. But hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. We are going to do a drive for both of them. We're going to see which one can get better fuel economy. We're going to test the acceleration. So stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching.